All right, if you're watching this video, it's no doubt because you have a Commodore 64 and you've heard the horror stories about the vintage power supplies frying computers. And the reason that happens is because these power supplies are over 30 years old. They're drowned in epoxy, so you can't even get to the components inside them to modernize them um, or replace aging components. Um, so what ends up happening is the components inside deteriorate, they go bad, they short, they spike your voltage, they hit your computer, and without any voltage protection, you're fried, your computer's fried. So you could spend $40, $50 on a current power supply, or um, this isn't an epiphany, I've seen other people do this, so I just decided to show you how I, uh, how I did it. Um, you could use wall warts. So, Basically, for the cost of maybe all of 10 bucks, I pieced this together. So, first things first, your Commodore takes two voltages. It takes uh, five volts, which are on those two pins up at the top there, the top and to the right of it. And it takes nine volts, so that's five volts DC, and it takes nine volts AC which is the two pins um, at the bottom. So with that, these wall warts I picked up at Goodwill for a dollar each. Um, the first one, the larger one here, is going to have my, uh, my five volts. See if we can get that uh, focused in there. Um, the five volts AC, um, and this is a five volt three amp wall wart. And you can use as little, I believe, as like one and a half to two maps. Um, some people even use uh, the USB uh, chargers um, for, for their phones. Um, the other one, took me a little patience to finally find this one, but it's, um, you can probably pick one up on eBay for less than 10 bucks. Um, this is the nine volts um, AC wall wart. And this is nine volts, uh, one amp. So, In the end, what do we got here? So I have two wall warts. And I have an extension cable I bought on Amazon. I think it set me back three bucks. Okay. So this extension cable, the two plugs on it happen to fit perfectly in there. But before I do that, what we're going to do is uh, I made a, I 3D printed a box for these to fit in. They'll slide in the perfect width so they won't slide around. Um, I have a grommet for the uh, extension cord on this side just to keep it from chafing. The extension cord is not going to be pulled or pulled any, anywhere because it's going to be held in place by the prongs on the, on the wall warts. And then on this side is where I put in my, uh, my DIN plug. And I'll get a couple of screws and bolts um, to put in there. I just finished this last night, so I haven't had a chance to completely finish it, but that's the DIN plug for the power supply. Okay. So these top two are five volts, the bottom nine volts AC. Rather than cutting up the plugs on these, I might want to reuse these later, or if one goes bad, I might want to, I want to easily replace it, but I don't want to be sitting here soldering and unsoldering. So what I do instead is I have these little female plugs that the wires from the DIN will screw into. Let's see if we can get this thing focused here. There we go. So there's a plus, there's a minus. That matters for the five volts, doesn't matter for the nine volts. And this is just a female for the uh, power supply. 
male. So power supplies will just plug into this. This will get tied into the DIN plug. So let's do that now. Again, polarity doesn't matter on the nine volts AC, but I like to be consistent. So we'll still keep the red on the positive and the black on the negative. And then you'll measure the voltage after you're done. So make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Five volts, nine volts. This is, this is the five volts right here. This is the nine volts right here. Notice they slide in perfectly on the sides. So then what I do is, since I'm going to keep all this wiring, I'm going to go ahead and just push all the wiring in this free space that I made for it at the end there. And I won't bore you with how I'm going to do all this wiring might take a few minutes, so I'll give you a quick pause and, and we'll come back. Okay, so got the wires wrapped in there pretty well, snug. Here are the two, the smaller one, that's nine volts AC. This is for the larger um, wall wart, which is uh, the five volts um, DC. You can see I have a grommet in place here for the extension cord keeps the that's the, the two wall warts are plugged into so all we do now is um basically again nine volts ac goes into the smaller one which are the thinner wires And then the five volts DC goes into that one. So I've done this a few times, so I already know which one's which based on the thickness of the of the wiring. But you might want to label them <laughs> just uh, just in case. So there you go. I just need to get the top for it, and I'll show you the finished product, and we'll test some voltages and take it from there. There you go. So be right back. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, outside of the obvious that the new power supply um, is, a, is a safer power supply to use with the computer, um, the weight. So this is the original Commodore 64 power supply. Turn this thing on here. And this little bad boy weighs just a, a little over three pounds. Get this thing in here. Three pounds, six ounces. And our new power supply, which you see here, I've now put the cover back on. And we can get this thing focused. 
Got the, the DIN plug on the bottom there on that side. Got the power cord on. Bottom is on. So let's weigh this puppy here. This weighs a whopping one pound, 12 ounces. So you can see there's a nice, at least a pound difference in the weight between the two. So let's, uh, let's test the new power supply, make sure it throws out the voltage we're expecting. Okay, now that we got our power supply finished and uh, in a nice little case, time to see, uh, I mean, you should probably have done this before you tightened up the case, but I already know that it works. Um, I tested it prior. But um, let's see if, uh, if the volts match up to what we're expecting. This is a, a stock Commodore power supply. Um, I've already um, tested it. It's in fine shape. So looking at the pins, um, on the top pins, we expect to see uh, 5 volts DC being pulled on here. You can see on the meter we're pulling 5.17 volts DC. And on the bottom two, we're expecting to see 9 volts, 9 to 10 volts DC. Uh, I'm sorry, AC on the bottom two pins. So we look on the bottom two pins here. Yeah, we're pulling about 10 and a half volts AC. So that's the stock power supply. It's what we expected to see. So let's see if we match up with our newly put together $10 power supply here. Got our cable plugged in. Make sure the DIN plug is in here. All right. So the meter's still on AC, so we'll measure the bottom two pins. Bottom, bottom two pins show 10.8 volts AC, so that's within spec. And then let's measure the top pins. And we're expecting around 5 volts on the top pins. And we got 5.32 volts DC on the top pin, so our power supply checks out. So we have a much lighter power supply now. Just based on a couple of wall warts. Um, cost was a total of $10, if even that. Um, the cable costs a little bit, the DIN plugs cost a couple of bucks, the power, um, the power extension cord a couple of bucks, the wall warts a couple of bucks from Goodwill. Um, again, you need nine volts AC um, and uh, 5 volts DC. Um, 5 volts DC is pulling around 3 amps. The 9 volts AC, um, a couple amps as well. And that should get you going. You'll have a decent power supply that you don't have to worry about uh, frying your, your computer anymore. So I hope that helps you out. At least that's how I did it. I'm sure there's a few of these YouTube videos around on other folks on how they did theirs, but this is the inexpensive way to go as far as I'm concerned. And uh, if you have any comments or um, you know you want to post any um, questions with regards to you know any of the parts that I used, um, feel free to post, and I'm happy to reply back. Thanks. Good luck.